Hello everyone. Uh, there are countless amazing stories about Bobby Fischer, uh, but uh, as it seems uh, there are even more mysteries about him. Uh, it was somewhat of a legend that Bobby Fischer often logged into ICC, the Internet Chess Club, and uh, played numerous Blitz games and also some bullet games, and uh, well, that he demolished anyone he came across. And uh, there were even stories that uh, F uh, Fischer had some very secret uh, matches against very strong chess players. And, uh, well, like I said, this was all considered to be a legend and le until one day uh, Nigel Short uh, uh, went public with it. Uh, he said that uh, over the past year he played uh, over 50 games against Bobby Fischer and uh, that he had some evidence uh, to support his claim. And, uh, well, <laughs> evidence number one and obviously the strongest evidence is that uh, the first match they played, it was a match of eight games and uh, Nigel Short lost uh, <laughs> with uh, zero to eight result. And uh, this was, uh, well, this was amazing because Nigel Short was actually one of the strongest Blitz players in the world. And uh, he said that uh, he doesn't really know if the person who played against him was Bobby Fischer, uh, but that he was definitely a better Blitz player than Garry Kasparov, the current world chess champion. And uh, in addition to this, he also uh, provides uh, one irrefutable, irrefutable evidence and... Uh, uh, as they played the games, uh, after one game he asked uh, this person who may or may not be Bobby Fischer uh, one question. He asked him uh, about uh, one name. Uh, do you know a, a Mexican player, uh, Armando uh, Acevedo? And uh, in an instant this person replied, uh, 1970. And uh, in fact Bobby Fischer did play one game against uh, Mr. Armando in 1970. And, uh, well, as Nigel says, this was instant. It was an instant reply. And even if he was to check the, the database and, uh, well, come up with an answer, it would still take him about 20 seconds. So Nigel Short said that he was, like, 99% sure that he was actually playing against uh, Bobby Fischer himself. And uh, I will show you one game of this uh, famous match that, uh, well, Bobby Fischer won 8-0. to zero. And uh, this is game six of their match. And you'll see, uh, uh, that, well, this is also one of the evidences uh, that Nigel provides. Uh, as you'll see in the first couple of moves in the opening, we had f4 by Bobby Fischer, d5 by Nigel Short, and now Fischer plays king to f2. And uh, <clears throat> Nigel explains this, and okay, this is a blitz game. Uh, but Nigel says that, uh, well, after 1975, after, uh, I mean, after <laughs> Fischer went uh, rogue, uh, Fischer only played about 30 public games, and uh, most of them were in in his 1992 uh, World Championship match against Boris Spassky. And, uh, well, let's just see the rest. We have Knight to C6 by Short, and now Fischer plays something very rarely seen. <laughs> we, he plays King to F3. And this is uh, avoiding completely the entire modern chess history. Uh, we have E5, and uh, Fischer plays C3. And this is practically inviting black to push the pawn on e4 and check the white king, but uh, this isn't uh, this isn't a very good move. So uh, we have knight to f6 by short, we have d3, uh, bishop to e7, we have g3, castles, and now king to g2. And now, uh, like I said, this doesn't have to be Fisher playing with the white pieces. Uh, but if you look at this position, uh, black is much better here. And uh, well, Fisher used the uh, unorthodox openings in all eight, in all eight games. And uh, whoever this person was actually managed to defeat Nigel Short with a result of eight to zero. So, well, uh, let's see the rest. We have e4, we have d4, h5, and uh, Short has the right idea here since. Uh, uh, White's uh, moves with the king, he already played uh, three moves with the king are somewhat questionable. It's time to attack on the king side. We have e3, uh, g6, we have h3, king to g7, c4, rook to g8, and now c5. Uh, Fischer completely uh, uh, blocks the queen side, and uh, now Short gets another idea. Since the queen side probably won't open up, he will, uh, well, he will continue with his attack on the king side. So rook to h8, we have knight to c3, uh, bishop to e6, a3, queen to d7, bishop to b5, we have rook a to g8, uh, b4, and now king to f8. And now this, uh, both of these rooks are now uh, ready to push the pawns. We have uh, bishop to a4, g5, uh, f captures on g5, and rook captures on g5, and b5, attacking the knight. We have knight to d8, and now Fischer is preparing this uh, b6 uh, thrust, uh, but first uh, he plays knight to g2e2 to defend this g3 pawn. 
So we have rook h to g8, now doubling up and uh, adding more pressure to this g3 square. We have b6, now opening up the attack on black's queen. So c6 is played, and now uh, b captures on a7. And this is a very dangerous pass pawn Fisher has created. Uh, we have queen to c8, blocking, uh, bishop to b3, uh, queen to a8, preparing to capture the pawn, uh, rook to b1, and now queen captures on a7. And rook to f1. Uh, we have queen back to a8, uh, queen to e1, uh, queen to c8, now uh, attacking this h3 pawn, and uh, well, uh, it's not it's not an easy task to, the, to defend this h3 pawn, so Fischer plays a brilliant move, I mean, <laughs> whoever is playing with the white pieces plays a brilliant move, he plays knight to f4, and he defends h3, but uh, is inviting black to capture on g3, and is preparing uh, to part with his queen. So Nigel complies, he plays rook captures on g3 with check and Fisher sacrifices the queen. Queen captures on g3 and we have rook captures on g3 with check. King captures on g3 and now bishop to f5. So bishop to d1, we have knight to e6, uh, knight captures on h5, knight captures on h5 and now bishop captures on h5. And uh, knight to g7 attacking that bishop and uh, bishop back to g4. We have a bishop captures on g4, h captures on g4 and now queen to c7. And king to g2 and uh, as you can see this uh, position is uh, well uh, black might be better here but it's a bit easier to play this with white uh, but uh, that's that's just the thing even even if black is better here which uh, which he kind of is uh, if he is playing against fisher fisher is playing the strongest moves so we have knight to e6 uh, bishop to d2 uh, knight g5 uh, bishop to e1 we have knight to f3 uh, and now uh, rook to h1 and now Fisher is ready to infiltrate the last rank with rook to h8 uh, so we have queen to d7 attacking the g4 pawn now king to g3 defending and bishop to d8 we have knight to e2 uh, we have bishop to, uh, checks on c7 knight to f4 and uh, queen to e7 uh, we have bishop to c3 and now this bishop to c3 move is, well, uh, guarding against ideas like knight captures on d4 and pushing on e3, uh, but also it completely, well, paralyzes this knight on f3. And, uh, well, black could uh, uh, play something like knight to g5, but this would allow rook to h8 with check and then rook b to h1, and this would be extremely good for white. Although this is probably a drawn position, but white makes better moves. So black plays uh, bishop captures on f4 with check, we have e captures on f4 and now king to g7. Uh, short doesn't allow Fisher to play uh, rook on h8 check. So we have a4. Fisher now uh, completely transfers the uh, the play on the queen side. We have uh, queen to c7, now rook to b6. Uh, we have f6, rook h to b1. And uh, black couldn't defend this pawn. It was simply undefendable. So king to g6, we have rook captures on b7, uh, now attacking the queen. And uh, here, well, uh, white is definitely winning here, and uh, short plays queen to d uh, queen to d8, and uh, here uh, Fisher actually has a forced checkmate in five moves. So feel free to check out the position. Feel free to find checkmate on your own. Uh, it's a it's a very nice checkmate. Uh, you know, pause the video and such. Uh, so those of you who were able to find the checkmate, I congratulate you, and uh, those of you who are just uh, here to enjoy. Uh, this is the sequence. We have f5 with check, uh, king to g5, we have rook to g7 with check, uh, king has to go to h6, now rook to g6 with check, the king is forced to h7, and now we have rook to h1, and this is checkmate. So this is uh, only one of the games, this is game 6 of their secret match on the internet chess club, and uh, I chose it uh, because I I checked all of the games, I, I thought this one was the most ap appropriate, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm interested in uh, to, to hear your opinion on this. Uh, do you think this is uh, sufficient evidence? I mean, you have one Nigel Short, who is, uh, who is probably one of the strongest players in the world, uh, considering Blitz, and also the classical chess, because, uh, well, he did challenge Gary Kasparov for the title. And uh, next you have the weird uh, choice of openings by white, I mean uh, e4, I mean f4, king to f2, king to f3. And uh, Nigel says that this is to avoid uh, uh, modern opening theory uh, entirely. And the next we have that, uh, that uh, thing that, uh, well, Nigel asked if he knew the, uh, the Mexican chess player, uh, Mr. Armando, and uh, 
the person on the other side instantly replied uh, 1970. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm interested to, uh, to hear your opinion. Is this uh, sufficient evidence for you? And uh, well, the mere fact that someone was actually able to defeat Nigel Short with a result of 8-0. to zero. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Oh, and uh, before uh, I wouldn't want to forget, uh, thank you Mark von Thormont uh, for your contribution to my channel and also thank you uh, all of Hamilton uh, for your contribution as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.